Don't we have experts? Are there no Nigerians who are knowledgeable in this sense? This is uncritical globalism. You are taking globalization hook, line, and sinker and saying, you're abdicating your primary roles as citizens of Nigeria and saying, let other people come and develop us. How can they come to develop you? You must work from within. If you don't know what you want, we'll force you to be free. My third and final slide. You know, we say we're a very rich country. We must be. What's the economic value of Nigeria? Very huge, very vast, but unknown. Okay? Unknown. All, all we have ever enjoyed is the potential of our country. The huge potential, the capacity. Unbelievable. There is no Nigerian who does not think that this is the richest country in the world. You know what people say? The country has money. <laughs> there is money. But I tell you, the first place to start with first things first is to know that we are a poor country. We are a poor country. How do I know this? Let's even deal on the formal side. The total budget of all the governments in Nigeria put together in one year, in dollar terms, will be less than the budget of New York City Council. No, no, no. New York City Council. Not to mention Harvard University. Not even to say how much India gives into research and development in the defense industry. And you are very rich. You see, if people are going to help themselves, they have to have a new consciousness, you know, to know that we are butterflies thinking we are birds. Look, look, all of these countries that have done well, do you know how they did well? What drives the world, I agree, is knowledge. It's always driven the world. Going back to Plato and Aristotle, it's knowledge that drives the world. If you don't have knowledge, you are not part of the world. You have to have knowledge. Those who lead us must not only have knowledge, they ought to convince us that they have superior knowledge. Now, how do you get superior knowledge? How do you get superior knowledge? Science has helped us. America goes to space. It is not Obama that sends them to space. It is R&D, research and development. And at the vanguard of this development is the defense industry, the military. That's the scientific vanguard of every industrial and post-industrial society. You must invest in those things so they tell us how to take us from where we are, which is undesirable, to where we want to be, which is what we desire. We must use expertise. We must recognize that there's specialization of labor. I'm a professor of political science. I'm very, very glad I am. And I think damn well I know my job. When, when, when you are a mechanical engineer and you have reached the level of a professor, you have something that this country needs. Look, under Nelson Mandela, I happened to be in South Africa at the time and I was privileged in the position that I occupied. Every month, they will meet as government with all heads of departments of political science. Another time with all heads of departments of economics. Another time with all heads of departments of physics. Another time with all heads of departments of computer science. And they're asking the question, are we doing well? Are there, are there things you think we should do? This is, this is the kind of integration that we need. All, all, no, not all, almost all the solutions 
that we want and the capacity to deal with these things are out there in our universities, our research institutes. People have produced tons and tons, volumes on this sense. But you see, the tragedy of first things first, if you called me to come to talk to you about federalism, when I leave, they say they are speaking English. <laughs> Why? Because for a long time we have become a society where anything and everything goes. You don't need expertise. You want to discuss serious matters of economics. You go to bring people who don't even know elementary economics. You're talking about monetary policies and fiscal policies. You're talking about what is the problem? We need to use expertise. And we have expertise in abundance in this country. Let those people not say to those experts, you speak too much grammar or you are too technical. Let me tell you. A long time ago, the American Academy of Science wrote to the American president and said to him, from the research we have conducted, we see that uranium is going to lead the world in another 20 years. We have mapped out parts of the world where uranium exists, and we are telling you we don't have a policy on colonization, but want America to take over those territories. Okay? They called them to a meeting. And uranium actually became, just as they predicted, a huge thing in the world, by which time America had taken over all of the uranium deposits. One of the mysteries of the Kabinda War in Congo is precisely that. Because there was uranium there. America will not colonize, but America was there. Okay? Societies are led by knowledge. We must let people who know be at the vanguard of our transformation. It is only when we have such a vanguard that we will begin to look again at our state and say this state do I relate to it only in terms of my share of the national cake? I should contribute something. We cannot be an import-export economy. God forbid! That's not a knowledge economy. Just import and export? The economy is too complex to be reduced to import and export. The production that we talk about is the one in which all of us will be not consumers, but producers. When we produce and we have this, we will have the anger that led to the accountability revolution in America when they say no taxation without representation. We must grow that anger in us. The one that will tell these people, you cannot use our commonwealth. But you know why we don't have that anger? We believe that the money Nigeria has comes from some mysterious source. You see, that's why we say, this country is rich. And you ask them, how? They say, well, I don't know, but we, 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 have, we have so much money. We have so much money. My final point is this, first things first. One of the common values we all have as Nigerians is corruption. <laughs> Pure and simple. If I've not been governor, but I know what governors go through. If you go to visit a governor, you expect that when you're leaving, the governor should give you something. The governor, Peter will be here. He can tell you. No, you must. You must give something. When you have become a big man in Nigeria and somebody comes to visit you, you must give something. Now, you see that something? That is your corruption. <laughs> Do you know why each time we 
take petrol from 90 to 200 naira, many people don't complain. Most of the people who use the most petrol in Nigeria don't pay with their money. They are on scholarship. <laughs> they are the people who will tell you, don't worry, just let the petrol be there, we can pay. My time is up. First things first.